and welcome back to another Doctor Who action figure review. In today's review, I'm taking a look at the History of the Daleks set number four from the Daleks Master Plan in 1965. Once again, a massive thank you to Character for sending these over for me to review. And as you can see, the Daleks look stunning as ever. But first, let's begin by taking a look at the packaging. The figures come packaged in the familiar window box, featuring the TARDIS on the side, the gold foil limited edition sticker on the front, and the little red box out telling us that this is from the Daleks Master Plan. And on the back, we get treated to a little synopsis about the story, alongside pictures of the figures themselves, as well as a little bit of history about the Dalek props, which, as ever, is always very insightful and fun to read. And just with all the other History of the Dalek sets, we're treated to another diorama backdrop inside. This time it's the outside of the Dalek spaceship, and this has been beautifully rendered with lots of details with all these large pistons and things and the different doors. And as ever, this works as a great display for your Dalek figures. Out of the box, we're treated to two very different Daleks from this story. One is the flamethrower Dalek that destroys the jungles of Kemble, and the Supreme Dalek. Both of these figures are actually re-releases with slight tweaks to their original paint jobs. So let's start off by talking about the flamethrower Dalek. Now, it is worth noting that the flame is, of course, removable. That's really cool. I love the fact that you can display it with either the flame or without it. The flame itself, I think, works really well. I think it's a nice sculpt and I love the colours, that lighter orange going down to that deeper orange. When you get light behind it, it looks like it's glowing. It's really, really cool. I always love that when you have toy lines that do stuff like energy blasts and explosions. So it's nice that we get to see something like that in the Doctor Who range. Also, what's really good about the flamethrower attachment is that the plastic that they've used is a lot stronger than on the original release. The original release had a tendency to sort of bend and droop because of the weight of the flame. This time it's a much sturdier plastic and that doesn't seem to happen, which is really, really great. The figure itself, other than the flamethrower, is basically your standard Dalek drone. Again, it uses that very new, brilliant, bright silver, which I absolutely love. It features the yellow egg cup style dome lights, which is an improvement on the original. The original had the Dead Planet spherical dome lights, which were painted orange. So that's a great update. And then for the eye stalk, just like with the previous chase set, We've got the lighter blue pale rings, and then you have the standard black and white eye. There is a little bit of bleed with my iris on my one. It's the white's just a slightly bit sloppy, but that's only a minor quibble, and that's quite an easy fix. And then moving down to the neck bin, paint applications here, very neat and tidy, very crisp, no bleeds. Similarly, going down to the shoulder section, the silver slats are all very tidy. There's a few scuffs here and there, but nothing too bad. The sculpting on the gun arm is also really well done with the interior rings. And just like with the chase set, we have the Dalek with the very light grey shoulder section. Now, I have mentioned in my review of the chase set that I wasn't too keen on that lighter grey. I'm still not sold on it, I have to say. But again, like I said, this is a figure that has been released before. So I do wonder if that lighter grey paint job is just to try and differentiate it slightly from that original release. Moving down to the skirt. We've got the same bright silver, which looks fantastic. And then we have the light blue hemispheres. Now, these are exactly the same as on the original version as well. However, I'm not really sure about the colour, and I think I might have said this in my review of the original one. I've gone back to look at pictures of the flamethrower Daleks. There is one that exists. And, I mean, they were all the same props being reused anyway. But the colour blue seems to be the same darker blue that was used on the Chase drone. So I'm not really sure why they went with such a lighter colour on both releases. I mean, this could have been the chance to tweak that, but perhaps they just wanted to add some variety. Not really sure. It's great to see the Flamethrower Dalek released again, and also at a more affordable price point for a lot of people who missed out on that original release. Not quite sure about some of the tweaks in the colours, but if you missed out on that original Flamethrower Dalek, then you're definitely going to want to get hold of this set. Then we move over to the Supreme Dalek, and this is another re-release with slight paint tweaks. Now, the original version was part of the Toys R Us Dr. Dalek 2 packs, and it was very hard to get hold of. It was very sought after. So this is going to appeal to a lot of people who missed out on that set. Just like with the other Dalek, you can see he's got the egg cup dome lights, and with the eye stalk, it's using that same light baby blue around the iris discs. And then the front of the eye uses the smaller shrinking white iris, which I love. I, I know I mention this every time that it comes up, but I really do love that. I think it works so well, particularly when you're using it on 
things like the Supreme Dalek, because, you know, they're going to be the ones that are doing all the conniving and the scheming. The paint applications on the eye stalk do differ from the original release, and this is very interesting. Here, as you can see, the main rod of the Dalek eye stalk is silver, and then you've got the black going into the dome. Now, on the original release, much more of this silver rod was actually black, which is much closer in accuracy to the Dalek prop used in the Dalek's master plan. However, my friend Dan did a bit of detective work, and it turns out that the supreme Dalek that briefly appears in the chase has the four silver rod, like this figure. So, in actual fact, this supreme Dalek is kind of closer to the supreme Dalek that we see in the chase, so that means if you're someone like me, who already had the original, this you can now display as your Supreme Dalek from the chase. So I think that's a nice touch for long-time collectors. Obviously, if you want it to be more like the master plan version, you can paint the eye stalk yourself. That's a very simple tweak. You could probably just do it with a marker pen or something. Moving down to the neck bin, you can see that this is painted in the lovely, brilliant silver that they've been using recently. Again, no paint bleeds here, very neat and tidy. Then down to the shoulder section, the same silver on the slats, no scuffs or anything that I can see here. And again, using that lighter grey colour on this Dalek, I think somehow it looks worse on the Supreme, I've got to say, because I think the dark grey contrasting with the black is far more subtle. Here is quite a vibrant change between almost white to black, and it doesn't work quite as well, I don't think, personally. But let me know what you think in the comments below. I, I'd be interested to hear what people's thoughts are. And then moving down to the skirt, this is all painted in this lovely matte black. I do love the matte black finishes on these. They do look really, really lovely. And then you've got the darker blue, which works really well. And there's no paint bleeds or anything like that. Everything is very neat and tidy. And then we finish off with the same thin black fender. And as ever, the articulation is the same as every other Dalek figure you've ever owned, so if we just move this guy out of the way, let's take a look at the Supreme Dalek. He's got articulation at the eye stalk, which pivots up and down. Again, the eye stalk on this one is slightly loose, but, you know, nothing to be ashamed of, Mr. Dalek. You've got articulation at the dome, so it can go 360 degrees. You've got ball-jointed manipulator arm and gun stick. And then, of course, the three wheels on the bottom with a fully rotatable one at the front, allowing for full Dalek movement. So overall, I think this is a very good set if you've missed out on either of these figures, because it's always nice to have a second flamethrower Dalek. I always wanted a second one and never had the opportunity to get another. So I'm really pleased that we've got another one, which is a lot more easily accessible. And I know people are going to be very pleased with the inclusion of the later 60s Supreme Dalek because it is a beautiful looking Dalek, I have to say, and it makes for a lovely figure. And I do love the fact that they've tweaked the eye stalk a little bit because it just means that people who managed to get the first release now have a slightly different version of the Supreme Dalek to put on the shelf from the chase. So it's a clever idea. I don't know if that was intentional. Like I said, the grey on both Daleks still kind of bothers me. I'm still not 100% sold on it, but uh, I still think that the figures themselves look absolutely fantastic and I look forward to seeing what comes next in the history of the Dalek sets. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all again next time for another Doctor Who review. Bye-bye!